Big Ten isn't going to just schedule Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, you know, the the eight or nine best teams in the Big Ten to play USC. You know, it's not going to work that way either. You know, there is going to be the Rutgers game and the Indiana game. And, you know, it's, it's there's going to be some 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 logic to it. And certainly they want to they want to highlight the marquee matchup, certainly. But they're just not going to be given the nine most difficult teams to play in the in the Big Ten. That's absolutely right. And, you know, one thing that's of obvious interest to USC fans uh, and also to Big Ten alumni who are in Los Angeles and who are going to be eager to go to the Coliseum to see USC play is how is the schedule going to be aligned in terms of like is, is the Big Ten going to regularly have USC go on, you know, a, a mostly road oriented schedule in the first half of the season? And then the Trojans go and stay home in November so that the Big Ten alumni uh, will have a nice, uh, sunny, mild weather to go to late in the season. It's kind of like a, not necessarily a Rose Bowl, but like a, you know, a, a trip to, out to Southern California to see their favorite Big Ten team play. Or, or is that really not going to enter uh, into the equation? It's just going to be interesting. And, you know, of course, you know, there's the new television arrangement with CBS getting the 330 game, the number three game, NBC getting a primetime game, the number two game, and Fox having big noon Saturday. So, you know, obviously Fox is going to want some USC road games uh, playing in the Eastern time zone and in, in the big noon slot. And you'll have NBC most likely getting uh, the most of the USC home games against a quality big 10 opponent in prime time. And then CBS is going to get, you know, CBS will get USC records. CBS will get like USC, Indiana, uh, USC, uh, Illinois, maybe, uh, for the 330 game. So like the television piece is also why you're going to see a balanced schedule in terms of, you know, it's not just going to be marquee names like the SEC's done this, right? You, you don't see Georgia and Alabama playing in the SEC regular season, right? All the time. That's a, that's an occasional matchup because you want them to play in the conference championship game. You want to save it up uh, for that moment. And so the big 10 is going to, almost certainly employ, you know, a similar philosophy working in tandem with primarily Fox, but also its other television partners. I would guess this is my guesstimate is that the the big 10 is not going to go out of its way to front load or back load the schedule, whichever way you look at it to make sure USC is just sitting at home in UCLA for the entire month of November. I don't think it's going to be that egregious or that obvious. Yeah. Yeah. However, they do play each other and they're going to preserve that game at the end of the season or second to the last game of the season, depending on the, the USC Notre Dame, of course, um, factor in that. So so that that takes out one November weekend, uh, first and foremost. And it, for USC, it takes out a second November weekend when they play Notre Dame at home. Um and so I would think that it would be, and, and obviously the Big Ten isn't going to just beat up on USC and make them just travel east for the entire month of November. So I, I would expect it to be skewed toward warm weather and home games in November, but that they would have to make their possible one trip, if not two, but one for sure um, to, to a Midwest location in November. I think that sounds about right. I think that sounds about fair. I think it's going to be slightly tilted to USC playing more games in November at home and more road games when the weather is not as severe. Um, but it's not going to be so egregious that it's the 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 balance is going to be thrown out of whack. Here's another point about scheduling, and of course, like this doesn't this isn't going to really come into focus until USC actually is a, a Big Ten member playing a, a Big Ten regular season schedule. But it's certainly worth thinking about right now like it's not too early to think about it and have these uh conversations about it here at the voice of college football when usc goes to the big 10 when should the trojans schedule stanford and cal you know that is going to be a highly intriguing question because you know that usc wants to play those in-state schools every year those are long-standing rivalries and one would think that you know like usc's non-conference schedule like the trojans aren't going to have to think about it their non-conference schedule once they go to the Big Ten. It's going to be Notre Dame, Stanford, and Cal. Uh, and like, so you're not playing, you're not playing cupcakes, and yet you're not playing overwhelmingly threatening teams. Like 
like just in terms of the actual merits in terms of how you structure a non-conference schedule like that that threesome makes real sense for USC not just because you're preserving long-standing traditional rivalries but because right now Stanford and Cal are not particularly challenging but yet you're still getting the rivalries like it's USC gets to win on a lot of levels with that but you know the the other nuance is like do you want to play Stanford can you can USC get away with and I got, there's going to be a push and pull with the Big Ten on this and with the TV partners. But like if I'm USC, just if I have any leverage in the room and because I joined the Big Ten and the Big Ten's, you know, making this major investment, you know, one would think that Mike Bone has some negotiating leverage uh, at the table. If I'm Mike Bone, and I know that this is all far away and we still have a 2023 season to deal with, but just like right now, my initial feeling is, Mike Bone should try to see if he can get like Stanford or Cal, one of the two, as like an early November uh, opponent. Not just because you're staying close to home later in the season, you can kind of catch a breath, uh, but also, you know, to play Stanford or Cal uh, like two thirds of the way through your season before you play an important Big Ten game against Wisconsin. Uh, you know, like if you have to play a road game at Wisconsin uh, on the second Saturday of November, playing Stanford or Cal as a non-conference game the week before that, that might kind of enable you to just kind of gear up for that Wisconsin game before you then get into UCLA and the end of your schedule. So, you know, we're conditioned to think that, you know, only Notre Dame is the non-conference game for USC, which is played, you know, outside of September you know, in October in odd years when it's in South Bend, as we're going to have this year in L.A. and on Thanksgiving weekend. But if I'm USC, I'm thinking about can I play at least one of the two, Stanford or Cal, as a non-conference game when we're in the Big Ten? Can I can I get at least one of those two games later in the year? Because I might need that breather later in the year, uh, you know, to play a, a, a relatively manageable game against the trees, against the Golden Bears, in the midst of all these really tough Big Ten battles, like that could be a, re- a surprisingly significant scheduling component for USC once it joins the Big Ten. It's just something to think about now. We'll see what USC is allowed to do, what USC has uh, the leverage and the ability to do. It might not amount to much. It might, not, might be that USC is just forced to eat the sandwich that the Big Ten uh, serves. But if USC has any negotiating room at the table, that is definitely something for the Trojans to consider. Well, as you well know, Matt, rarely do Big Ten teams take breaks from the conference schedule. They usually play their three non-conference games yep. right out of the gate. Yes, and they then do. They play the rest of this. Now, they, they have let up on that a little bit in recent years where you do see a conference game or two sprinkled in the first three weeks and then it broken up a little bit. But generally, it's three non-conference games, then you play. So I would expect the other fan bases to bellyache about that if USC gets to step out of conference later in the season. Okay, Tim, our friend Tim Prangley says, I, I want to play other teams. Tim, what, like, what do you, what is like your initial sense of what a, a good non-conference mixture would look like for USC? Because, you know, let's, and let's, you know, keep this in mind that because USC is traveling to the Eastern time zone, to the central time zone. Um, how, how should USC juggle uh, its non-conference workload? Like that is a real consideration. I mean, you're not going to be able to play all three uh, non-conference games at home, certainly in the years when uh, you have to go to South Bend uh, to play Notre Dame. So like, if you want to cash in on, you know, being a big 10 member, does this mean Tim, that you want to play a, a, a good team in the, Central time zone, maybe play more Big 12 teams, uh, you know, to maybe be able to recruit more in Oklahoma and Texas uh, as kind of like a recruiting strategy uh, for playing in the Big 10 and being on a on a, on a, a different national level. What, just what are some of your thoughts? And maybe other people watching here at the Voice of College Football might have uh, uh, thoughts that are similar to Tim's. It's, well, it's an interesting conversation to have. Yeah, I can understand Tim's point down the road, but initially for the first at least three or four years, 
while for most teams, the freshness and diversity, the interesting part of the schedule is the non-conference because it's different teams. It's going to be just the opposite here. So the freshness and diversity and unique quality of the USC schedule for the first few years in the Big Ten is going to be playing all these Big Ten teams and playing this just completely different schedule. So the uniformity or the familiarity of playing Stanford and Cal, I think, wouldn't be an issue uh, for the first several seasons because the rest of the schedule is a whole new experience. Yeah, that's an interesting point that be, be, be precisely because you're playing so many new opponents regularly, having some quote unquote comfort food opponents. Yeah, that actually pre presents uh, some balance uh, to the larger schedule. But I think, you know, beyond the idea, the specific idea that USC should just schedule Stanford and Cal, the larger reality is, you know, if, if USC is in the Big Ten, like a calculation has to be made in terms of how much do we have to gain in, in terms of recruiting? Like, I think that's, that's really important that, that, you know, how, how can USC schedule its games to, you know, because like, and Tony Altamore raised this point on a number of shows over the off season and leading into the early part of the regular season. Like he mentioned that, you know, with USC joining the big 10, like there's going to be a lot of networking uh, among alumni and also in terms of recruiting uh, in New York, when USC plays a road game at Rutgers, there's going to be a lot of recruiting and networking among Trojan alumni in Washington, D.C. When USC goes to College Park uh, to play Maryland. So, like, should USC be scheduling non-conference games in a very targeted way? Like, you're definitely going to play one cupcake at home just so that you're not traveling, you're not on a plane, because you're going to be doing a lot of a lot of plane flights, logging a lot of miles during the season. There's no question you're doing one, at least one cupcake game uh, at home. And then, you know, Notre Dame's the second. So like really that third non-conference game, the non-cupcake, the non-Notre Dame game, what do you want to get out of that game each year? And of course, when USC joins the Big Ten in 2024, we're also going to have the 12-team playoff. So that does mean that if you're USC, you can lose twice, not once, and still be very likely uh, to make the field, that could also be uh, a significant factor to take into consideration in terms of how USC wants to formulate its non-conference schedule mix in the Big Ten. Your schedule is going to be difficult enough in conference. And on top of that, you play Notre Dame as one of three non-conference games. Uh, you know, w w you don't want to beat yourself up. There's no reason to just make your schedule just a complete gauntlet. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you're, you're going to have the gauntlet in the big 10, like that, that is the new gauntlet. And you want to be sure that you're ready to make your statement when you play every big 10 team on your schedule. There's no question about it. So yeah, like that, that, is, you know, is, is, is an important thing to keep in mind, but also, you know, because USC's profile will increase in the big 10, like USC is not going to be on PAC 12 network anymore. You know, you're going to have a lot more visibility for each game you play. Like the Trojans will want to pick their spots and see what opportunities are out there. I think in terms of playing uh, a, 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 a non-conference game in a part of the country, which will enable them to recruit nationally uh, and make sure that like they get offensive linemen for big 10 weather uh, in November when they have to go on the road in the big 10, you know, in uh, wow. Madison, uh, in East Lansing in November, when they're asked to do that, like they might need to get uh, linemen from that part of the country. So maybe you play a, an occasional non-conference game, not every year, but maybe like once every three years that you play a game, you know, somewhere in the Midwest against a tough team, you know, maybe like, I don't know, Cincinnati, maybe West Virginia, something like that. Uh, so that you have a reason to go to Pittsburgh and recruit, or you have to get to go to other upper Midwest cities uh, in that part of the country and you can recruit big 10 linemen like that, that should be at least be a part of the recruiting philosophy attached to non-conference scheduling in the years ahead for USC. For the reasons we've already cited, meaning the UCLA game is going to be a home or close proximity road game for USC every year, the Notre Dame game every other year at home in late November, the, the, weather issue for USC 
I'm not going to say that USC is not going to get caught in a weather game at some point in the next four or five years. But it's really, if you really look at the weather the first couple of weeks in November in the Midwest, it's really not that big a deal. It's, it's, I bet the average temperature in Columbus, Ohio, the first couple of weeks in November is in the high 50s. Uh, you know, that's that's a more centrally located. I understand Minneapolis is different and others. But so, yeah, they'll, they'll catch some weather. But it's it's been a little overblown in regards to what the weather's like in the Midwest in, in November. You know, that's true. I, I would say, though, that like one of the games that's hard for me to shake in terms of, you know, uh, a high flying offense running into a miserable weather day, Ohio State at Northwestern. Uh, you know, CJ Stroud was just off and the, you know, the weather was just yucky and yeah. you know, just, just True. human being, human but it wasn't beings, cold. It wasn't it was like cold, 65 but, degrees outside, but, but, but windy yes. and, and gray and just, you know, yes. not very fun, not very no, fun. And so, uh, and, and so it just, it, it does bring up the point again, not so much whom USC plays, but where and when, like maybe Lincoln Riley will, will, will think to himself, you know what? If we are able to play a non-conference game in the middle of October, in the years when USC isn't going to, to South Bend, so it's, in other words, it would have to be an even-numbered year because you have Notre Dame uh, as the non-conference team, you know, on Thanksgiving weekend. But like in an even-numbered year, should we play, uh, you know, a game in a, 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 a an Eastern or Central time zone location in mid-October to prepare us for? a bad big 10 weather game, you know, so that this non-conference game, it's so like maybe, maybe USC plays a road game against a, a weaker opponent, but it's in a bad weather location in mid to late October. I don't know. So like, maybe you go to what Memphis, maybe uh, you play a, like a late October game against Memphis. So that when you then have to go to uh, Columbus or, or Iowa, you know, a week or two later, you know, you, you don't feel entirely like a fish out of water. I mean, like, I'm not saying that. I don't think Memphis likely. is quite going to do it. All right. I don't Maybe, I, maybe I, Iowa I, State. There you go. There you go. I, that That's probably a lot. That's a better choice. Yeah. So, like, maybe you do that with your third non-conference bite of the apple if you're USC. You use that non-conference game to prepare yourself for the, the Big Ten weather game. So, it's just it's just another thing to play with. You know, I'm not, I'm not making any predictions, all right? I'm not assigning any likelihoods. But, like, if you're USC and you have the ability to manipulate your non-conference schedule, you should be thinking about things like this. It might that not That might not be the best answer or the final solution, but USC should be thinking strategically about its non-conference games, not just, you know, oh, we'll just play whomever and we'll get our non-conference games out of the way early. Uh USC should not be on autopilot. Let's put it that way with its non-conference scheduling. I would guess that some of USC's trips in late October throughout the month of November to places like Boulder, Colorado, Salt Lake City, Pullman, and other places have been just as nasty, if not more so than what they're preparing for. It's true, but uh, but USC didn't have that this year with the all Los Angeles uh, November schedule. It really did not. Because we've, you know, in past years, USC has had to play in Boulder in mid-November when it would get a little chilly and it would have to play in Pullman a little bit later in the season. But USC didn't have that this past season. So like that would be like that. That would be good for Lincoln Riley if he makes sure that uh, when he gets to the Big Ten, if he can schedule uh, non-conference games that can prepare his team in any way. It might not be for bad weather. It could just be for recruiting purposes. Like there, there just should be ways that USC should be thinking strategically about how it aligns its non-conference schedule. That's the main point. 